ladies and gentlemen good evening and welcome to ajmera reality and infra india limited q2 fy24 earnings conference call we have with us today mr dawal ajmera the director of the company mr nitin bavisi the chief financial officer and ms sonia agrawal the senior manager for investor relations please note all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone i now hand the conference over to ms sonia agrawal thank you and over to you ma'am thank you good evening everyone and warm welcome to you all on behalf of the company i would like to thank you all for participating in Asmera Reality and Infra India Limited earning call for the second quarter of April 24. The call will commence with opening remarks by the director, Mr. Dawal Asmera, and will be followed by the business performance discussion by our CFO, Mr. Nitin Babuji. We have already shared the operational update. Sorry to interrupt, ma'am. Uh, can you uh, come a bit uh, near to the mic? We have already shared the operational update of the quarter in the second week of October 2023. The investor presentation and the press release based on the financial results adopted by the board have been uploaded on the stock exchange website and can be downloaded from a company website. Please do note that some of the statements in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature, reflecting the company's outlook and may involve certain risks and uncertainties that the company may face. I would now like to hand over the call to our director, Mr. Dawal Asmera. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, very good evening to everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, I just want to say that uh, you know we we as uh, India as an economy and we all are looking in a very positive and a, a great position. It's a very optimistic surrounding uh, where the Indian economy currently looks like. This positive outlook is unpinned by several growth or catalyst, which I can say, which is really helping, uh, you know, expand our country uh, to, you know, a very different level and also propelling consumer spending. Uh, this growth trajectory is projected to evaluate, uh, elevate India to the position of the second largest economy in the Asia Pacific region and surpassing the Japan in the process. Real estate, of course, in all these means is also playing a very pivotal role to ensure that uh, it continues its growth and its uh, performance towards the expansion of the Indian economy. And, uh, you know, with all these, uh, the recent festive seasons and the economic output, I think the overall positive outflow of people buying real estate has been very good. Uh, and we can definitely see that from the sales performance and also from the recent, uh, uh, you know, the registration data, which always shows that, uh, you know, the uh, registrations in Mumbai uh, specifically, where we operate, uh, has been, uh, you know, growing uh, at uh, registering 10,000 plus units every month on month. And overall, if you look at it, where all these cities, including Mumbai, Pune, Bangalore, are looking at a good growth, uh, in in the real estate sector, obviously these sectors, uh, this sector has been driven by three four factors which we uh, uh, you know perceive to be. Number one is uh, the most biggest thing is that the you know the recent decision of RBI where they have maintained the repo rate at to be standard and same as per the current levels. And this is given, you know, coming at the time of the upcoming festive season, it all also plays a very book, very big uh, reason for people to buy. Number two, uh, you know, the, the middle class income, uh, disposable uh, income in the middle class has segment has been, uh, you know, growing uh, year on year. Uh, and plus the development and infrastructure of uh, cities in Mumbai and, uh, you know, different other cities has also been playing a key role for people to take uh, opine decisions and investment decisions towards real estate. So overall, uh, we are definitely very positive about the outcome and uh, looking forward for a great year in the coming six months. 
As far as our projects are concerned, I'm pleased to share that, that all the progress and all the projects uh, which we are currently are being under development has been progressing well. Uh, Ajmera Eden, I'll start with, which is a Ghatkopar project, has been uh, doing strong, it is continuing to have a strong launch momentum. Uh, remarkably, we've sold 32% of the inventory in the last four months uh, from its launch. Uh, construction also has been progressing steadily. We've reached the ground level. Uh, second project, our Ajmera Manhattan, uh, obviously the uh, flagship project of ours, has been doing uh, steadily well. Uh, it has, uh, you know, the tower B uh, of the two towers, uh, construction has come up to the mezzanine level and tower A is also following the suit. Uh, notably, we've also sold 54% of its inventory. So as far as sales and construction both are going, it is doing really nice. We are very pleased and proud to announce that we have uh, gotten OC occupation certificate and completion of Ajmera Greenfinity and Ajmera Sikova way below and way earlier than the RERA timelines which we have mentioned. Uh, these both projects have been done commendably well. Uh, they have sold almost more than 90% plus in both of these projects and we have completed below 36 months of you know for both of these projects. So as far as sales and as far as construction is concerned, for Ajmera Greenfinity and Sikova uh, completed way below time, sold also well, so overall it has been a successful run. Ajmera Preway, our premium project in Juhu, has also seen a great progress towards construction, where we have uh, done about uh, eight floors of uh, construction, already done out of 12, and uh, impressively we have, in the micro market of Juhu, we've achieved construction of every slab on an average of 14 days. And with this also, you know, we have seen um, markets and momentum moving where we've seen about 31% of our inventory already being sold in this particular project. Usually this project sells post, uh, you know, construction or nearing completion, but, uh, you know, selling at this stage also has been great. If we come to Bangalore now, uh, our mid-luxury project, Ajmera Nucleus, Seaving, has already been finished, uh, almost finished. We are 99% sold in terms of its inventory and uh, our commercial project has also started catching the momentum of uh, leasing where we initiated some leases and we are hoping to have more in the coming quarters. Uh, our affordable segment of project which is Ajmera Lugano and Ajmera Florenza has been progressing rapidly with 68% of its inventory already being sold and also uh, we are seeing a great momentum in terms of its strong demand for quality homes in these areas and we are hoping to uh, have the balance inventory being sold uh, quick, quicker as well. In the first half of FY24, our business development has made great efforts to further strengthen our footprints in Mumbai. We've acquired a valuable piece of land in Vikroli, as we had earlier announced, with a GDP of 550 crores. And over and above this, we have done about few redevel we have acquired about few redevelopment projects in Mumbai. Uh, the one being at Warsova, uh, which is in the prime area of Andheri, uh, which is having a GDV of 360 crores. Second redevelopment project is Yoginagar, uh, which is a redevelopment of four societies in Burivli, with a GDV of about 330 crores. We have acquired an SRA project in Bhanduk, where the entire slum has been vacated and uh, we have started the development and construction of the same where the development potential is about 1.7 lakh square feet with a GDP of 320 crores. This is talking about Mumbai. When we look at Bangalore, uh, we also have acquired one more project or one more land in Electronic City Phase 2 with a, 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 under a joint development agreement with a value of a GDP of about 150 odd crores. So with all of these above, we are progressing great towards our growth trajectory with all these projects which, which I just said and plus uh, the other projects which we already have in our kitty, we are looking at 2,750 crores of sales revenue coming in with a potential of 1.3 million square feet to sell. These projects will be started uh, or being started now or will start soon. Over the next 3-4 years, we shall, we shall see these projects being completed one by one. These projects formally demonstrates our growth progress uh, and dedication towards creating value for our stakeholders. 
The recent announcement firmly aligned with our goal of achieving 5x as we bolster our portfolio and further our presence in this promising micro market. We remain resolute in our commitment in achieving 1000 crores of sales in FY24 backed by strong sales momentum that has already carried us halfway towards realizing our 5x growth vision in uh, half one. Uh, uh, this growth strategy is anchored well is anchored in a well balanced mix of redevelopment, joint ventures, strategic acquisitions and unlocking of potential of our land banks. So in all uh, fields of development at Ajmeras, we are progressing well and we are looking forward for a great year uh, in the coming balance half. I would now like to hand over this conference call to our CFO, Mr. Nitin Bhavati, who will take you through the performance highlights of the year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ajmeras. Uh, very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your presence and I would like to share some of the key performance highlights before opening the floor for questions and answers and more interactions from both the sides. In the second quarter of FY24, we observed a remarkable 50 plus uh, uh, growth numbers, YOI basis, in terms of sales area and as well on the value uh, basis also. So in terms of sales value, we have clocked the sales of about 252 crore during the quarter two FY24. Further, we uh, maintain the momentum of our uh, collections as well at triple Y crore at uh, quarter two FY24. The sales growth was primarily driven by the sustained launch momentum of Ajmera Eden and the significant contribution from Manhattan and as well on other ongoing projects as well. Coming to financial numbers, performance remained stable compared to same period last year due to a uh, very high base effect of the last year. Let me clarify up front that last year, similar period, quarter two FY23, we had Manhattan as a uh, project which got uh, had the revenue recognition eligibility for the first time. So on a quarter on quarter on a uh, YOI basis, the financial numbers are to that extent on a limited purpose is not comparable. So with that clarification, let me uh, dwell down on to the quarter on quarter numbers. On QOQ basis, revenue jumped by 26% to 148 crore. EBITDA and PBT stood at 40 crore and 29 crore respectively, with EBITDA margin at 27%. We believe that we will be able to maintain this margin levels going forward with well balanced mix of projects company uh, is executing currently. Tax to uh, 23 crore with a 7% Q1 to FI24 trailing quarter, I mean to say, and with a pet margin at 15%. As you all know, one of our uh, ongoing focus uh, areas is to have financial stability. Keeping this in mind, we were able to maintain a rather sustain a debt equity ratio to below 1x since FI24 when the financial year when we started. And this particular endeavor is going to be, you know, on a continuous basis, give and take because of the aggressive uh, business development activities. Weighted average cost on the debt side has been 12.1% marginally higher than because of the, you know, RBI CRR uh, requirements and a uh, couple of loans which has the annual reset of the floating uh, rate basis. We are delighted to uh, report strong revenue visibility of approximately 4,755 crores, encompassing our existing project as well as upcoming launches. In the next 6 to 12 months, projects at advanced stage and those which, for which we have received OC is expected to contribute 190 crores to our revenue and our mid-stage project portfolio is expected to contribute about 1,800 crores to our project portfolio. Uh, or on the revenue side within the period of about 30 months from here on. The estimated net cash flows from our existing portfolio is expected to be about estimated of 960 crores, reinforcing our strong financial position and ensuring successful completion and execution of our growth strategy. This robust revenue visibility provides good confidence in our ability to deliver sustained growth and value to all our stakeholders. With this uh, brief uh, on the financial and the uh, important business highlights, I would like to open the floor for the question and answers and further interactions. Thank you.
Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Before we take this question, I would like to remind participants that you can press star and one to come in the question queue. The first question is from the line of Jeevan Patwa from Sahar Sir Capital. Please go ahead. The uh, is just few questions. <clears throat> so one is uh, this quarter, I think we have uh, handled some thousand keys. So uh, that revenue should come in Q3, uh, IH? Uh, we will build that revenue in Q3, right? So basically, that particular uh, endeavor uh, was uh, to uh, club few of the projects and to hand over the, you know, a remarkable number of 1,000 positions in a given time frame of about 24, 24 uh, hours. So we pulled our few of the projects like Nucleus, Greenfinity, Sikova, and wherein, you know, the occupation certificate has been received. And we handed over this commendable and uh, we bolstered this particular achievement as well. So that revenue will be booked in Q3? Uh, we, as we follow the revenue on a progressive basis, so Sikova, Greenfinity, uh, projects has already been uh, participating and as well Nucleus participating into revenue cycle uh, as we move forward on the execution. So to answer your question, most of it would have been done and we will continue to do so while uh, we have the OC coming in, whatever is balance left. Well, if I actually look at the numbers for the half year, then uh, in the top line, in the bottom line, both uh, has been degrowth actually. So just wondering, is second half going to be much better than the first half? So uh, I think, you know, uh, to compare year on year is a little challenging in, in you know real estate segment because some projects or some segment we have a great sales and you know when it is being and while we follow the revenue recognition uh, sorry project completion uh, uh, progressive re uh, thing for uh, uh, taxation purpose uh, it is uh, different for different projects so uh, while we had a great run over Manhattan sales last year uh, and which had a higher volume and higher sales. So that, that actually gave a great numbers to our uh, uh, books. And while this year it is more on sustained mode and the velocity or the volume of projects which we have announced are not as bigger as compared to Manhattan. Hence, we probably see here and there. But overall, we, uh, you know, towards the growth of the project and if you look at the momentum where last year we were at around total sales of 800 where we are, you know, very positive about and looking at 1,000 odd crores of sales this year. So obviously we are progressing and not moving back. And just to support your uh, question on the number basis, uh, if you read the uh, slide number 14 in the investor presentation, uh, we have uh, already sold position of about 780 crore and where from the revenue is still unrecognized. So that those revenues is going to be recognized on a progressive basis on the execution of the project. Just to specify a particular project, as Dawal Bhai mentioned about the Manhattan, 782 crore worth of the sales has clocked into Manhattan, out of which 275 crore worth of the revenue recognized. So 507 crore of the revenue yet to be recognized based on the pre-sales uh, numbers. So this kind of a numbers will keep on uh, coming into income statement on the execution and progress of the projects. Okay. And is there any big launch in the second half? Uh, so are you thinking of launching Manhattan 2 or any other big launch? Well, we are planning, we are looking at all things subject to some approvals coming in place. Uh, we have a few projects already been uh, tied up. 
so hopefully if all permissions come in place we will definitely do uh, some launches Perfect, perfect. And anything on the uh, repatriation of the money from outside? So we were about to get some 200, 250 crores from outside. So is there any progress in that? Uh, not as of this quarter or this uh, year. Uh, I mean, sorry, this half of the year. But we are expecting some part to it for, of it to come by the balance and majority be coming later part of the next year because of uh, the Bahrain project, which is anyway expected in FY24-25. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Dolby. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you so much. At this time, if you would like to ask a question, please press star and then one on your touchstone phone. The next question is from the line of Runit Kapoor from Systematics. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So I want to know, going forward, like, uh, what would be your mix between affordable and uh, luxury housing, like, and mid-income, like? So we are, you know, it depends on the market to market, but primarily, you know, we are focusing a lot with all the current projects which we have or we've acquired is some are mid-luxury and some are uh, luxury, but not, are, uh, but not many are, some are also affordable. So it's a mixed bag. But there is no percentage that, you know, we will only do 20% of affordable and 50% of mixed luxury or something. But it depends on the project. It depends on the opportunity. And uh, we are uh, we are not averse to any one particular thing. But if I really look at Mumbai as a micro market, it, it makes more sense for us to do mid-segment and a little luxury as compared to affordable. But if I look at Bangalore as a market, then again over there is also... Uh, affordable or mid segment to that range, which may be uh, 50, 75 lakh bracket, which is a uh, mid luxury in Bangalore micro market. So, overall, wherever there is an opportunity, we would uh, look into it and take it forward. And uh, are you all looking to expand into any new micro markets? Like? No, we are currently with whatever projects or what we are conceiving is more into uh, Mumbai, MMR, Bangalore, and Pune. Okay, and in this last question, uh, so uh, a lot of developers have started this uh, development management model, where that uh, so like a more of a service model where they're taking a fee. So are you all networking to enter into that? Well, we are exploring a few, but nothing has been tied up for now. Uh, but uh, it depends on uh, you know viability, visibility, and uh, in a way how it works. But as of now, we've not tied up it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dev Ajmera from Investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi, Daval Bhai. Uh, why is there a delay in the uh, demerger process? So, typically, as I have been clarifying, the, we are at the last leg, but uh, petition, unfortunately, is not coming on the board for the hearing. Otherwise, we are very hopeful it's a plain vanilla uh, uh, travel of the asset from the holding company to 100% subsidiary. So that's the reason. But we are uh, hopeful on the uh, first opportunity. We are hopeful of getting this through kind of. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions may please press star one at this time. The next question is from the line of Harish Shah from iShare Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, first of all, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I would just like to uh, know from the management that uh, we are aiming for close to 1,000 crore sales by uh, uh, um, FY24. So uh, could you just help us know that what would be the specific launches uh, would be, that would be help us to attain those numbers, and uh, how would be the growth being seen in the coming year, and any ballpark number for the F4, FI25? So, as we have given the breakup of, uh, you know, the inventory available, which is about 1,500 crores of uh, inventory available to sale kind of a thing, so that is going to be definitely the ongoing projects will help us clocking these sales. Plus, we are very hopeful that kind of uh, experience which we have in about four months 
Eden has given us a sales of about 30% plus. So that that's the kind of case study or the uh, performance is giving uh, giving us a good confidence. So if you refer to the slide 15, uh, we have given the seven project launch time timelines. So a uh, couple of projects which are like you know into FY24 like the uh, uh, Greenfinity. Uh, Electronic City 2 and as well the uh, Central Mumbai 2. So these are the projects which we expect and we are on track to have the launch in time and uh, keeping the you know confidence index high onto the launch velocity of sales. So coupled with the existing inventory of the project portfolio plus these launches, we should be you know which we are already halfway, we should be having the thousand plus crores as we have guided. Okay, and uh, and uh, if you can share something about FI25, uh, your goals for that, uh, and any ball, any any guesstimate would be also working. So typically, if if you read the last two years numbers, like you know 430 crores, or from FI22 we travelled to 840 crore plus. Now you know we are giving the thousand crore in FI24, uh, which is our estimation. So that's the kind of base effect on which you know we are progressing kind of a thing, and uh, the launch which are there into you know beyond FY24, which also will be participating as per our list. Overall, 2,750 crore is the estimation from this seven project plus the ongoing inventory of the existing portfolio. So we are very hopeful of clocking thousand, and then after the on a higher base of that thousand to have the numbers in FY25 as well. Uh, okay, and uh, <clears throat> with regards to uh, our debt, so we, uh, I think, just in H1 FY24, there was some marginal increase in that. So if, if you can clarify the same, and what would be your debt reduction plan for the com for the coming couple of years? Sure. So uh, if you notice the last paragraph on my brief. We have about 900 plus crores of unlocking cash flow from the existing uh, portfolio, which is having the life cycle of about 30 months as we have given the guidance of the revenue recognition. So that particular uh, operating cash flow is going to help us. And if you notice this seven project acquisition, which are of low capex, except one, we have other six projects which are of the nature of society redevelopment or uh, uh, SRA projects and such kind of a thing which doesn't require the investment upfront. So we are keeping our debt management from that particular standpoint. And uh, yes, it is a marginal, uh, you know, from March basis to September, it is just a 10 crore which we have increased. Okay. Uh, thank you for the detailed uh, answers. I'll, I'll be joining back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Vignesh Ayer from Sequent Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so I just wanted to ask, uh, with, uh, so we are focus is, uh, I mean, out of the total business, uh, mainly in uh, MMR uh, area of Mumbai. As in, so just wanted to know with the uh, increase in pollution and the government bringing in strong regulations, how has it affected our uh, project? Uh, because uh, recently we heard that uh, a, a prominent builder in Mulund, they had to uh, clo uh, you know, shut down, uh, close down their business for a few days uh, uh, as they were issued notice. So, and uh, can, could you explain us what, uh, uh, what I, uh, you know, what regulations, how it is going to pan out because even elections are adding, so probably they were strict, very strict on it. So uh, we are, the government and BNC has already issued us guidelines of to how we have to tackle or look at uh, this uh, pollution levels and, you know, what do we really need to take as precautions. As a company, uh, we were um, majorly doing that, but however, there were few guidelines which have come in. Uh, we are already implementing that and uh, we are trying to maintain... Uh, whatever best is possible in terms of water fogging, in terms of cleaning the tires of the trucks before it moves out, and also, you know, uh, covering the entire building with the net in to some certain extent and increasing the 
uh, what do you call uh, the peripheral surrounding walls uh, to a different height. So all that precautions have already been given to us. We are pro working towards it and uh, we are ensuring that uh, uh, you know we follow those guidelines and uh, not, do not try to stop work. Uh, right. Uh, uh, is it uh, uh, with respect to the stop work notice that uh, that is being sent apparently? Is it? I mean, is there? Uh, you know, they want that 35 feet height in or metal sheets to be erected, etc. Right? Or else the notice is coming in. Uh, can you tell me if, if it is a, a significant expense that is coming in for all our projects, or it is very small? I mean, for all the uh, equipments and whatever is needed for the thing. Uh, technically speaking, uh, there will be expense coming out. It's not that it is going to be uh, easy task. Uh, however, there is a lot of monitoring and uploading to be done, which is going to be a little more tedious. Where we have started, you know, pulling our team to ensure to do that. There are some AQI monitors, the pollution sensor monitors, and stuff like that, and the water water uh, mist uh, systems to be provided. That all we are doing now. Uh, well, uh, we cannot, uh, you know, really move away from this, and it's a responsibility which has been given to us as developers by the government. And in order to ensure that if we can probably provide some bit to reduce the pollution, we should do it, and that's what we are doing. Okay. Uh, another uh, other question from my side is on part of the revenue booking. I mean. Uh, so, uh, I mean, revenue that we need to book in our P&L, what is our estimate for FI24 and 25? I mean, roughly, if you could give us a ballpark number. So, if you notice, like, you know, uh, on the base of FI23, where uh, revenue top line was 440 crore, we are already at 261 level uh, in the first half. So, definitely on our equation basis, like, you know, we are ahead of the curve and we are... Uh, getting newer projects like Bangalore and, uh, you know, few uh, projects, ongoing projects, Manhattan and Privy, which is the high margin project. So these are the projects continue to uh, participate into revenue recognition uh, cycle. So those ones definitely help us to uh, give a good uh, significant uh, jump over the base of about, uh, you know, FY23. Okay. But, uh, sir, if you could, uh, I mean, give a number to it, maybe 15, 20 percent more than what it is in 23, would be a fair uh, assumption? So, the progressive accounting definitely basis, uh, is the function of the execution of the project. So, as I have uh, uh, briefed on the earlier question, we have revenue uh, unrecognized out of the sale position, which is 780 crore. The faster we execute and bring this uh, progressive revenue to income statement would be the earlier uh, business kind of thing. Right, sir. Right, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and all the best. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Aditya Sen from Lohrobo Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. So in the earlier calls, like the past four or five con calls, we have been guiding about the 30% EBITDA margin. So are we still st sticking around this 30% range? So we are in that range only. And uh, let me clarify that the EBITDA or for that matter top line right from the revenue up to PEC is always a function of the composition of the projects which are coming into the revenue cycle at given point in time at a reporting date. So that always be the, you know, uh, that's the reason quarter on quarter is clarified by the by. It is not that comparable kind of a thing, but we are very hopeful of maintaining our uh, margins to this level. All right. Also, the previous participant asked about that. I couldn't get that point. Can you uh, please uh, give any ballpark number with respect to debt servicing in the coming years? So basically, we we have the debt level which is almost 1x of the debt equity right from FY24 which we have entered. And despite having the business development activity, however, uh, uh, six projects out of seven is low capex uh, or the redevelopment or the SRA, wherein you know the investment is not upfront but it is over period of time in terms of the you know 
corpus and rent and uh, transit accommodation and things of that sort kind of a thing. So those kind of a thing doesn't require investment upfront kind of a thing. So that is going to conserve our cash flow. Plus on the completion or the past tech execution and as well on the launch of the new projects which will generate cash flow for us. So those kind of a thing will help us on the debt management as well. All right, sir. All right. So, okay, fine. That was my question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Utkarsh Somaya from Utkarsh. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. I just wanted to clarify one thing. Out of your current uh, project portfolio, the revenue potential is 4750 crores, am I right? Including all the inventory in different stages of completion. So, if you refer to slide 14, it is uh, 1216 crore on the inventory to sell and 780 crore of the revenue, which is on the basis of the already pre sold position. So both put together, it is a 2,000 plus crores of the revenue, which is yet to come from the ongoing project portfolio. So I am looking at um, slide number 21, which says that you received OC for projects for 2,000 crores and plus potential launches are 2,750. So that sums up to 4,750 crores. So yeah. So, as I clarified, that 190 crore of the sales revenue from the OC received or advanced stage completion of the project and 1800 crore of the revenue to from the mid-stage project. That's how the breakup of overall 2000 crore, which I explained from the slide 40. And plus, we have the sales potential of the launches, which is having 2750 crore over seven projects of 1.3 million. So, both put together will have the revenue visibility of 4,750 crore. And if I'm right, you expect to realize all of this from now until FY28, right? So, we are already in FY24 and uh, 1,800 crore worth of the revenue, which is the larger chunk from the ongoing project portfolio, for uh, which we have given the guidance of two and a half year, which is 30 months. And uh, right. 2,755 crore, as the I explained, is the launches having the life cycle of about three to maximum three and a half years, four years kind of a thing. So that's the kind of, you know, timelines on which this entire revenue gets recognized upon uh, sales and execution. So is it fair to say that if you complete all the sales until FI28, you will uh, probably realize around 1,200 crores of average sales per year may not be in one particular year, but I just mean to say average sales. Is that a fair understanding? Yeah, on a mathematical basis, yes. On the four year, 4,750 crores. So 1,200 crores is what arriving you are you are arriving the number, right? Yes. yes. And since accounting for real estate is different, as far as uh, investors are concerned, okay. our pre-sales and collections is what we must focus on instead of looking at the PNL um, sales. Is that right? Very appreciative. Uh, yes, and that's the reason the sales numbers, which is the guidance of 1,000 crore and uh, having the sales clocked of uh, 830 on the base of 430 last year kind of a thing. So that gives the good confidence about the, yes, revenue will follow into the income statement having sold aggressively. So it would be incorrect to say that your sales have degrown because that is just the PNL and not the um, pre-sales. Is that right? So typically revenue will uh, revenue recognition will be having the lag of sales kind of a thing. So once you have a good performance on the sales side, income statement will definitely follow accordingly. But it can always uh, be that the income statement follows after one year, right? Or maybe more. But if I talk uh, about... First half. Not typically, not typically because execution of the project, faster you execute and incur your cost, that will accelerate the progress or the uh, measurement of the uh, revenue or the progress of the project and accordingly the uh, revenue gets recognized. Okay.
Thank you so much and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Mehir Desai from Desai Investments. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. So first of all, I wanted to ask you macro questions. So uh, currently, what is your take on redevelopment landscape, uh, especially in MMR region? And uh, would you prefer uh, to buy a new land and develop, or uh, redevelopment would be a better option in MMR region? Just wanted your take. So primarily, my take is at least our take is that uh, redevelopment is a good opportunity in the city of Mumbai or the suburb of Mumbai. Because where the land costs are really high, and and honestly, there are not too much of land available, so obviously redevelopment is the option. Uh, number two, uh, we are not averse to not buying land, but uh, we particularly feel that if we do a JV, JDA, or we do a redevelopment where the capital investment is less, we can probably do four or five projects versus doing one project uh, and uh, buying the entire land. But obviously, it depends on opportunity to opportunity. While well, like just giving an example of one we bought. A uh, few months back in Vikroli was is an outright buy. Uh, we've done a few redevelopments. We've done a slum redevelopment. So it's all uh, it, it's on the opportunity and you know the IRR returns which we feel is great and helps us get a better top line is what we look at. Sure, uh, sir. Are there any projects in pipeline which we are looking or any targets uh, in the segment? So uh, uh, a team is constantly evaluating in different portfolios, be it slum, be it uh, uh, society, or be it outright sale. Uh, as in how the opportunity unfolds, we probably bring it on the table and make, make an announcement. But uh, for now, uh, we have done, uh, if you really look at it, this year we've majorly done most of the acquisitions. I don't think we'll have any more coming in. Uh, very recent, but otherwise uh, we already have done the acquisitions, and now uh, we are also concentrating on getting approvals and getting these projects started. Sure. Uh, so, uh, for, for a follow-up question on new launches, sir. So, as we see, there are lots of new launches uh, uh, in current quarter and you know half yearly. But uh, I just wanted to check with you that how much confident are you, you know, on executing the projects and uh, delivering it on the expected timelines? So if you really look at our history, we've always been great in execution. We've always had a good record for delivery. Uh, uh, very recently, we've also just got, as I said in my brief, that we've got occupation certificate of two of our projects. This is Esmera, Great Infinity, and Sikoa way before the RERA timeline committed, at least on an average nine months to one year before. Uh, so we are very confident with our team and you know that is when we really when we are making announcements we make sure that we will be able to execute and we'll be able to deliver so that's how we are moving uh, ahead with these projects sure uh, great good luck sir uh, if i have further questions i'll get back to you thank you thank you so much to ask a question please press star and one now the next question is from the line of Harish Shah from iShares. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, so thanks for the opportunity once again. So this is again uh, a kind of um, continuation from the previous participant and uh, a kind of macro uh, uh, you know, uh, on the sector. So what is your what 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 how? What is the expectation? How would uh, the the real estate a uh, sector uh, perform in the coming, uh, you know, couple of uh, couple of years. Seeing that, you know, we have been seeing traction all over the nation in the sector. And uh, what what are the potential, uh, you know, challenges? Uh, like, uh, and how how we how would you we would be able to mitigate that? So, if you really look at, you know, the real estate market. Uh, has been doing really nice and it has been progressing well over the last two, three years post-COVID. Uh, importance of home has always been there and with COVID it just uh, multiplied and it made multifold uh, interest in different sector of people, be it young aspirants, be it mid-age income or be it, be it old. 
uh, everyone is looking at larger apartments uh, everyone is looking at good apartments with amenities uh, people's expectation for spending have also been increased people are you know spending good amount of money in their day to day life so overall the economy is doing well uh oh if you really look at uh you know the world economy which is suffering from some of the other wars here and there but still india is progressing well and uh, because of its current uh, or inherited uh, growth or inherited requirement uh, our take is the real estate market will continue to grow uh, the market is looking buoyant at least next few years definitely looks good there may not be great price hikes which is okay and understandable but if there are uh, if the momentum continues i think it is a uh, uh, it is a very very good sign uh, the government is also helping it well the only problems which we foresee and i we really hope the government does not take such kind of steps is maintaining the interest rates at this levels or probably reducing it from what it is i think if that continues this momentum will continue to grow uh and uh, overall i think uh, i really don't see too much of an oversupply coming in but uh, if uh, you know the infrastructure uh, projects which are moving around in in major cities like mumbai and bangalore or other cities on wherever i think they are progressing well if this continue i think overall the progress of the nation and those cities will grow and with that real estate will definitely take the moment Oh, okay. Uh, so just just one continuation. You 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 just mentioned that uh, if the interest rates, uh, you know, uh, support like remain stagnant or uh, decline a bit, uh, you know, it would uh, it, this would add momentum to the current, uh, uh, you know, uh, growth that yeah. we are seeing. Mm. Is, is that is that is what you mentioned so, right? yes definitely uh, the momentum will continue if there is a decline in interest rate obviously uh, liquidity will be there in the market which will boost up the sales is what our feeling is but definitely uh, uh, with the current say even if it being stable i think there has been a gr- gr- uh, steady progress mm-hmm. okay thank you thank you sir for the uh, for the opportunity once again i wish you all the best Thank you so much. As there is no further question, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nitin Bavisi for closing comments. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I would like to express my sincere appreciation for your interest and taking out time for joining us uh, and uh, hearing us our credentials. And uh, we look forward to any further questions or interaction which you have. uh to now to our ir team or to our ey uh, our investor relation consultant and uh, we look forward to interact with you all and till then uh, i wish very good uh, greetings for the upcoming festivity season and stay safe stay happy thank you thank you so much on behalf of ajmera reality and infra india limited that concludes this conference Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.